Walkie data collection and programming best practices. Assure the patient is not at risk of falls. Hand check and walk shoulder to shoulder with the patient. Utilize the walk aid audible beep. Start with the uninvolved leg. Use a preset distance or figure eight walking pattern. Attach walk link to the walk aid unit. Ensure that the blue and green lights indicate connections for communication between the software and the devices. Please refer to the walk aid system setup video for more detailed instructions. Click on create a patient profile and enter his or her personal information. Select Program, then click on Rapid Plus Programming. Confirm the location where the file will be saved and click Save. The WalkAid system is now ready for data collection. In the Stimulus setting window, you have the ability to adjust stimulation parameters. You are now ready for walking data collection. Give the patient very specific instructions and explain what you will be doing. Click Start on Data Collection. Instruct the patient to take the first step with the uninvolved leg. Apply manual stimulation via the walk link with every step, holding the button down through the entire swing phase of gait. You will begin stimulation at the appropriate point between heel off and toe off and maintain stimulation through heel strike. At the end of walking data collection, click Stop. You will see a series of bars representing the stimulation you provided with each step. Light color bars represent the swing phase of each step, with their thickness equal to the stimulation duration. Dark bars represent the stance phase of each step, during which there was no stimulation. By using your mouse to highlight a series of consecutive steps, you are selecting a sample representative of the patient's gait. Try to select 8 to 10 consistently spaced bars. If the optimization error is greater than 20%, click Unselect and select a different series of bars. If the optimization error is still greater than 20%, click Back and collect new data. If the optimization error is less than 20%, click Next to send the program to the walk aid you will hear a beep which indicates that the program has been sent successfully. Next, place the walk link around the patient's neck. On the walk aid, set the audible beep so that while you watch the patient walk, you will be able to hear the stimulation occurring. To set the audible beep, start with the walk aid powered off. Depress the middle blue button on the walk aid while turning the walk aid on. Release the button immediately after hearing the beep that indicates the power is on. To deactivate the audible beep, simply turn the walk aid off and back on. Ask the patient to walk. Watch the patient walk and listen for audible beeps, which indicate that the stimulation is occurring. Ensure the patient is not at risk of falling. Ask yourself three questions. Is there stimulation with every step? Does the stimulation start at the right time? Does the stimulation stay on long enough? If the patient misses stimulation with any steps or if the stimulation timing is not right, make adjustments on the adjustment screen for control settings. Initiation. If the stimulation starts at the wrong time, change the start of stimulus. Duration. If the stimulation is on for too long or not long enough, adjust the duration of stimulus. Missing stims. To address missed stimulations, move the missing stim bar to the left. A shorter wait time allows the stimulation to occur with each step. You may also resolve missing stims by moving the end of stimulus bar to the right. For explanations about the adjustment options or how to make specific adjustments to stimulation timing, move your cursor over the yellow question mark next to the option. The Show Gate feature allows you to view the gate pattern on a graph. The waveforms displayed represent each step moving up through the swing phase and down through the stance phase. You can make adjustments to the walking program on this screen. Changes are sent immediately to the walk aid device. If the patient is missing stimulations and you note that the walking graph does not cross the on or off threshold with every step, Adjust the appropriate threshold until it is captured by every step. 
If all steps cross both thresholds and the patient still misses stimulations, decrease the wait time. If the stimulation starts too soon, raise the on threshold. If the stimulation starts too late, lower the on threshold. If the stimulation stops too soon, lower the off threshold. If the stimulation stops too late, raise the off threshold. The advanced setting tab lists the stimulation parameters, which can be adjusted to improve comfort and function. Increase the pulse width for a more forceful contraction, for example, large limb, limited response. Decrease the pulse width for a less forceful contraction or increased comfort, for example, peds, small limb, hypersensitivity. Increase the frequency of pulses. It often improves comfort. For example, peds, small limb, hypersensitivity. Add extra stimuli to encourage a more immediate response to the stimulation. For example, delayed response due to multiple sclerosis. Add an on-ramp for a more comfortable, gradual dorsiflexion or to inhibit spasticity in response to the stimulation. Add an off-ramp to mimic eccentric control of dorsiflexion. For example, control foot slap or allow tibial progression over the foot to inhibit knee hyperextension. The usage log tab indicates the percentage of the usage log capacity that is full of recorded walking data. If the percentage is high, select this tab to retrieve and clear the usage log so that additional data can be collected. Select the exercise mode tab to customize an exercise program for your patient. Anytime you adjust the walking program, observe the patient walking again. The patient is ready to enjoy the benefits of walk aid.